Buenos dias. That's Spanish. <laughs> what, what's Italian for hello, Gabe? Uh... Buongiorno. Buongiorno, <laughs> listeners. Welcome to Let's Drown Out Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. I was going to say Ave Citizens, but... Or as I like to call it, Sasso Credo Brodobido. Yes, we're playing a good game again, Pretty with a twist words. again. Oh, and so the this twist... Is a good one. Does this still... I, 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 you know, one thing that probably bothered me the most about the Assassin's Creed games is just the time travel. The idea of, like, thinking back in time via your DNA. You obviously haven't played it extensively, if that's the only thing that bothers you about No, it. I only really played the first one, and that just annoyed the shit out of me. Like, it is just a sci-fi stretch too far for me. And well, I this just... is the third game in the main continuity. The second game in the Ezio series, the straight sequel to Assassin's Creed 2. Is which... this the one that had the pretty cool multiplayer where you had to look like NPCs while other people were trying to assassinate you? Yes, it also had fucking annoying minstrels like this guy but hey stab the shit out of him you're a minstrel let's see you dance give him a minute i just gave him the poison what does it do you'll see this is exactly what i do to vagrants in um brunswick street dance <laughs> exactly dance vagrant blimey we must we, i guess we gave him a nerve toxin uh, you give him bottles of wine that you've spiked with various concoctions. Well, that was fun. That's fun. Now, the special condition I mentioned. No parkour? No. Nope. Oh, the condition what? is... This is post-story. I've finished the game and most of the side quests. Fuck there's, a doodle do. There's basically nothing left to do except... Collect all of that. Mostly chests and flags. And there are some businesses I haven't bought. Because this is very fully entrenched in the faffing about aspects of Assassin's Creed. <laughs> this is why... This is Buy businesses! This is what annoyed me about the series going on from Assassin's Creed 2. Which was a decent game. But it introduced this concept of, uh, firstly, like, uh, management. Where you had to buy stuff to upgrade your homestead. Hmm. And it brings in more money that you can spend on more upgrades that in turn bring you more money. So there's so no the way to thing. get rid of the money and it just piles up. The Fable thing. Basically, yeah. yeah. I didn't like that when it was in Fable. And they kept doing that throughout all of Ezio's games. They, they only numbered games when they introduced a new historical protagonist. So Assassin's Creed 2, then Brotherhood, then Revelations, they were all Ezio games. And it's a me, Ezio! <sighs> Don't make that joke because they actually did make that joke in the series at one in point. In the game? Well, in, the, in Assassin's Creed 2, when you meet uh, the leader of the Assassins, your uncle Mario, he introduces himself by saying, It's a me, Mario! That seems like I. That seems a little tonally off from, like, the game. Soldiers, I can kill those with impunity. Like, doesn't the game kind of take itself seriously? Or, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's just gotten the, wacky. Well, the first game took itself seriously. I think it got a bit more tongue in cheek from Assassin's Creed 2 and was. Partly because everyone was talking in incredibly broad Italian accents. <laughs> okay, but also, making everyone speak in a really bad fake Italian accent. It also no way to get around this one, guys. It also generally made the game a lot lighter. I mean, well, the first Assassin's Creed game was set in the Crusades, of course. Yeah. The Third Crusade. And so there was this very deep sort of feel of please don't kill us Muslims running through the entire game. <laughs> and with this game, they, I guess they felt a bit more relaxed. Yeah, look, I mean, just check out those relaxed hats. Exactly. And all those frilly roughs, the Renaissance kicked ass. Roughs. You want to bring that back. You should bring back roughs. Anyway, where's the nearest chest? Yes, in the grim darkness of Renaissance Italy, there is only chests. <laughs> there is only fetch quests. And flags. There's a flag. Let's just get that one. It's what I don't like about the Assassin's Creed, uh, especially the Ezio trilogy, is that... Uh, they tried to innovate it a bit with each game, but the only innovations they come up with were just to make the game easier. How so? Well, let's see if we can find a good case in point. See that guy on the roof? Yeah. He's dead. Alright. Let's find another one. Alright, did... You finished the game, though. Like, is that, like, a, like something you had to upgrade a long time to get? 
No, you can get the crossbow um, as soon as you've got 12,000 florins. So after you've bought your first slum. Basically. But that, like, basically right at the start, yeah. Hmm. But before that, even before that, you can use throwing knives, which uh, basically kill most unaware enemies. Actually really hard to use, too. Oh, hey, there's another guy on this roof. He's dead, too. Ow, my fucking brain. And this... He's not dead now, he actually just... You got him in the head, but he's now yeah. retired and you have to look after his wife and child. It's, yes. He can they should now... have shit like that. Like, if they're gonna have, like, oh, you can buy a house, you should have... You've crippled a soldier and now have to look after his family. Yes, he's gone through some kind of weird mental conditioning and now he can no longer speak in a stupid Italian accent. <laughs> okay, see all these guys? Just voiced by Kiefer Sutherland. See every single one of these guys? Yeah. They're all dead. What? <laughs> what just happened? Well, part of the new mechanics they introduced in Brotherhood was that you... Uh, Have a brotherhood? You, yeah, exactly. You huh. train up uh, uh, street kids into master assassins. <laughs> and I've already done that. That's, that's pretty much what I'm aiming to do when I teach in the outer suburbs. So you can see underneath my health... There's oh, like right. three bars, yeah. and as those fill up, it means your assassin helpers are now free. My Basically, horrible murder children. Target someone, press one button, and your murder child will come and just kill his ass instantly. If you've got <laughs> all three, you can hold down the button, and it, as you, we just saw, it unleashes a storm of arrows and kills them all. And doesn't this kind of subtract all the fun challenge from things? Don't you agree, Mr. Guard? <laughs> oh... I thought, because, I don't know, it's been a while since I played the first one, but didn't, like, you have to aim the things and get them in the head? Oh, uh, no, like you didn't. Balls. Like, you I didn't could have sworn you had to hit them in the head. Well, you didn't have to aim, you just targeted. But, uh... You didn't have to hit them in the head, otherwise they should go, hey, and then... Oh, bugger, I fell. <laughs> didn't die, though, because I got all this these med kits I can just apply instantly. <laughs> apply them directly to ankles. See, this is the point in the series where it's less Thanks. about a, f you know, a fun, challenging assassination game and more about you know, fucking about. Yeah. Faffing about and making money. Money that you have no use for except to earn you more money. Disregard bitches, acquire Florence. Help your savings grow. <laughs> so all these games are just a sneaky way of influencing children to be financially responsible. I mean, um, Why do they chase you? Because they want you to hear their lovely song. That's weird, though. Like, that's... It's not as bad as the beggars in Assassin's Creed 1, mind. That shit was annoying. Mm. There was an achievement for grabbing them and throwing them at walls. <laughs> Whereas in real life, there's no achievement. You just have to enjoy doing that. No, quite. Yeah, I think Assassin's Creed, the whole Ezio trilogy, does understand the importance of character arcs. Oh. So you can see what it's doing. Assassin's Creed 2, it's just Ezio starts off as just a dumb, noble kid from a privileged background. His family's killed, he has to become an assassin and avenge them. By the end of it, he's a master assassin. In Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, you start off as just one of the assassins in the Assassin Order, and you uh, gradually feel you have to take on the role of mentor. Fair enough. And by the end of it, you are like the king of all the assassins. King of all Kilmos. And Assassin's Creed Revelations was kind of the one after this. Just kind of spins its wheels. It's like, <laughs> you're the best assassin ever. You're in a new city where one of the we didn't assassins... didn't think of anything beyond that. Where one of the Assassin's Guild has been set up. There isn't even a drama, as I recall. You just show up and uh, you meet the other assassins and... Uh, everything, you have a party. Everything just seems to be fine. It's like the Wu-Tang Clan of murderers. You just all get together and occasionally you put out an album. I mean, you do have to establish another... Like, train up another bunch of assassin helpers, but... That was more because the existing assassins were being a bit lax with the hiring and not because of anything the Templars were doing. Hmm. A flag! These, flag. these things These things do nothing. <laughs> they have no value. It's 100% completion is what it is. I don't... So I like, don't know. See, I, I like exploring. I like... Um, I'm a completionist for gameplay mechanics, so like, if there's a thing you can do that... Yes. is something, then I will absolutely go and look for that. I will look for, you know, new narrative, like narrative fluff. I absolutely love that. Yeah, see, one but, of the things I've already done in this game is finished all the Leonardo missions, which uh, are the only things that produce actual new, gameplay yeah. changes. Or, like, again, like, story, background, bits and pieces, like, scannable objects in Metroid. Like, that was kind of cool, because you could learn stuff. Just Touch the thing is... I don't know, I, it's kind of fucking annoying, to be honest. I've, I've, I've always... 
Because like, I do have a bit of a completionist in me, but when I know when that completionist instinct is just being deliberately goaded by shitty developers. I found some alum. What's that? I don't know. <laughs> the other thing in this game is you collect random objects from chests, and yeah. some of the shops have like shop quests where you have to find two of this, three of this, and four of another thing. Are we doing one of those? That sounds no, fun. No. Shit. Because they're fucking boring. And you get like a special like object, but Basically, it's just another 100% completion thing. See, this is what I didn't like about the Assassin's Creed series. How, how it sort of stepped away from the just pure stabbing in Assassin's Creed 1. It well, just, just became more about the faffing about and yeah. showing off the history research. I mean... I mean, Assassin's Creed 3 was awful for that. It was mainly just wanking over American history. And also, you are a... You're not even... You're barely an assassin. You're an Indian mercenary who happens to own a farm. <laughs> and you have, and you can make sofas, but you can't do anything with the sofas. You just Game sell them on. Game should have just been called America's Creed. Freedom! I mean, I, Assassin's Creed 4 was when I liked the series again. Because, that was uh, the pirate? Yeah, because then you got a ship and could explore the seas. And That actually does sound pretty nifty. Like, just the idea of having a boat. Yeah, board enemy ships and uh, stuff. And I am... We're going to play Assassin's Creed Unity when it comes out. And I'm hoping it'll be good because it's the French Revolution and that's a kick-ass period of history. Ass kicking. And very fitting for the theme of, you know, freedom versus... So what's control. the overall narrative arc in the future? Well, the overall narrative of the whole series is yeah. that ever since the dawn of time, there's been a feud between the Assassins and the Templars. Who, like... Fair some enough. Sometimes they've been organised. Sometimes one has utterly destroyed the other, but the other has rose again because it's a basically a natural sort of philosophy yeah and what that philosophy is the assassins believe in total uh, personal freedom the templars believe in uh, peace through control that's it right. basically but the templars are usually just the villains by default sometimes you know they're presented as sort of morally ambiguous like uh, hatham kenway in assassin's creed 3 who was like a templar but he used the skills of the assassins and he wanted the assassins to join with the templars mm. But that wasn't really happening, let's face it. Right, so it's Internet Libertarians versus a right-wing forum. And, you know, for ostensibly the good guys, the assassins do murder a hell of a lot. <laughs> that's, that's freedom, Yahtzee. Freedom. I mean, there was no other way. Freedom. These people are corrupted. We've got to kill four of them in <laughs> one fell swoop. Yeah, I'm going to stick my freedom knife in you. Those tomatoes have got to be rank as hell by Feel now. Feel the freedom. Oh, weird leg cramp. Oh, uh. Well, it's your own fault for being physically minded. <laughs> yeah, I got dragged along to a gym today to be like a girl's gym buddy. By a lady. And I'm not good enough for you anymore. <laughs> the jealousy in your voice. There's yeah. so many layers of jealousy. <laughs> you were a whole half hour late for that, bitch. <laughs> it's, it's like, I can tell you're jealous because I wasn't paying attention to you, and you're jealous because a woman was paying attention to me. So you're having, like, this amazing jealousy on jealousy sandwich. I get female attention. <laughs> I get, oh, I'll have you know I've had the sex. It's just getting them in bed that's the hard part. I kind of, like, exercise to me is a bit weird because I generally do it a lot alone. Like, it's a very sort of solitary activity for me. So doing it at a gym in front of other people Come on, is Ezio, kind of like... figure this out. If suddenly someone said, hey, you want to come to the Masturbation Club? And you're like, huh? And it's like, yeah, you know, everybody does it. It's just where we like to do it. We just go to the big room, we all jerk off, and there are other people around when you do that. And I had a Masturbation Club in high school. <laughs> <laughs> well, we didn't do it in front of each other. We just discussed it. We were all young men in a boys-only school exploring our sexual development the only way we could. Are you going to slut-shame me? Oh god no, I was just saying for someone who doesn't like the fucking, you know, fanfic writers and slash fic writers getting fueled, you've just given No them... one writes slash fiction about someone jerking off. Uh, slash yeah, fiction, no, that's the whole a bunch point. of a bunch of private school boys sitting around talking about jerking off could easily get, you know. Well we that's didn't whip it fun. out. Well, you say that. Not not while I was around. Maybe they're all doing it to exclude me while I wasn't around. Wouldn't put it past them, actually. <laughs> now you're bitter because you got excluded from the masturbating in front of each other. I was always alone. I don't know. I just wanted to be included in the wank. Part of me just wants to, like, sort of mess with other people. Because there was only, like, a few other people in the, like, five or something like that just working out. And I just, I don't know. What? I just want to mess with them a little bit while they're exercising. Just serenade people while they're on a bench or something. How romantic. <laughs> Somewhere over my gains, bro. 
Well, I'm out of ranty things to say about Assassin's Creed. Let's think of something else. <laughs> were you else. talking about Assassin's Creed? I thought you were talking about masturbating. Well, I, that was an boy's own adventure. That was an aside. <laughs> oh, hang on. There's a Asides book. Creed. Yahtzee spanking it. There's a flag around here. So, again, there's not a whole lot to talk about. Well, there is some then, but considering our history with social justice rants, we, uh, we're kind of loathe to talk about it. Well, I, I, I think we, we can discuss it without discussing those lunatics. I felt it. it would be remiss of us not to mention it, though, because it has been a big story. Well, because I'm an egomaniac, and as a result, I, I, I absolutely completely understand the need for people to insert themselves in their video game experiences. Where's this flag? Like, that's... Well, you know, every time I, I play, that's like a, that's a perfectly valid thing to want yeah. in a game about me's. Yeah, where you're, it's supposed to be like a cartoon version of yourself. We're talking about what was it? The stupid Japanese word "tochomaku no, no, life." No. I think it translates directly to "fuck faggots." Anyway, the truth, the thing was, the Japanese made this life sim game. If Nintendo in Japan made it, but they deliberately excluded homosexuality from it. Because, you know, frankly, homosexuality is something you have to deliberately edit out. By it's also the best by color default, for an agent. By default, surely everyone can have sex with everything else. You have to specifically say to it, no, only these people can have sex with yeah, these Yeah, because people. the way you craft the game, the game doesn't have gender. You've got to tag something as one thing, tag something as another, and then say one thing can't bum the other one. Where's this chest? Carry on. I don't know. Again, it's one of those things where it's like, I understand, like, the, you know... I, I, again, as in you, you want to, you, you want to be you. That's the, and in a yes. game where it's all about like be you, you really. I mean, it's like how Capcom made that game that was like it's all about you get to create a sword fighter and you go through the dungeons, no women, and it's just like really, yeah. Well, you and, wanna... they, they they said it would like double the amount of time to produce, and it's like I kind of call bullshit on that. Like all you have to do is, like, I mean, come on, you're gonna be wearing armor anyway. It's like Dark Souls. You don't fucking notice. Well, yes. That, that was something weird that happened in Dark Souls 2. See, I was uh, playing it, like, blind, as you do. And uh, for some reason, some way through the game, I realized, wait a minute, my character's female. And I hadn't made them female when I'd created the character. I had no idea what had happened there until I read, you know, one of those I bet you didn't know this guides mm. and figured out that... There's a laser that just zaps you, girly. No, there's this coffin in the starting area you can, you can get in. It just says, you know, there's a prompt to get in coffin. And when you get out of the coffin, you're the other gender. And you wouldn't know because you're in armor. Yeah. But that's that, fun. It's, it's, a, it's a rather strange thing to have. <laughs> if that coffin existed in real life, would you test out a vagina? Well, if it worked both ways, sure. Yeah. Just spend the weekend as a lady. I kind of want to because I'm a little bit jealous of vaginas because they seem to well, enjoy I don't know. sex I mean, more than... I mean, does it come with the... Uh, well, the vagina doesn't spooge like a cock does. Uh, I've been with girls that prove that wrong. <sighs> Thank you for that wonderful <laughs> image. <laughs> Says Mr. Spooge. What the... Thanks, Leonardo! <laughs> <laughs> Origami parachute! Hooray! Yeah, this is the gift you get for completing all the Leonardo side missions. <laughs> Origami parachute. Look at it. It's Renaissance great. paratrooper. <laughs> I was supposed to use those platforms to get to that flag. I beat the system. But yes, uh, Nintendo deliberately didn't have homosexual relationships in this life simulator thing, and it caused a big old stink. Uh, I don't know, because this is one of those ones where there is a valid point to be made, but it's also going to be jumped on by, like, anuses who just enjoy being angry. Well, and I don't yes. like those people, but by the same token, you know... Just, That's just... the trouble with internet debate. You're always having to separate the <laughs> Tumblrettes from the feminists and the neckbeards from the actual men's health advocates. Neckbeard! I mean, you know, men do suffer in certain ways. And no one's saying, don't do all that stuff feminists are doing. We're just saying, maybe add a bit on. Well, I don't know. See, I reckon if, if you want a thing done, do it. Saying stop, you know, like, stop uh, women only being, like, suffering from, like, job placements and shit, but also stop men getting fucked over by uh, being forced to pay for children they didn't want. Maybe do both. We can do both. Well, I don't know. Again, like, my, my, my thing is, like, you know, they always go, what about a dude's rape crisis shelter? And my response to that is, well, make one. Fucking make one. Like, they, if you want to... They tried. Wanna... The feminists shut it down. What? Uh, yes, this is a famous story. Erin Pizzi, the woman who made, like, shelters for women, 
also wanted to go around and make a shelter for, for male victims of domestic abuse. But the feminists just sort of uh, harangued it away. They even killed her dog. Militant feminists, I should say. That's a bizarre story. It's a very favourite story of the MRAs, as I've uh, heard. Uh, see, this is this is why I just stay indoors. <laughs> Can't really win, can you? No, every time you 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 want to you want to help people, and then I remember you end up. This is what I mean. You end up stuck in these semantic quibbles of having to explain precisely where you what group you're part of. And this is why I mean, don't don't fucking identify as a group because the second you do, you just give someone a million like ways of. I remember seeing a having opinions about what you think before you've said them. I remember seeing a documentary that coined the word "odearism," which just which was just about the way you know people who try to get involved in good causes eventually uh, fall up against the wall of odearism, where problem arises and the only possible response is "oh dear." Well, that's like uh, the, the thing they mentioned Whee! was that there was this African tribe who were oppressing this other African tribe. So all these, like you know, busybodies in the West gave lots of support to the oppressed African tribe, and, and then, then that <laughs> tribe turned around and oppressed the other one straight back. And so all anyone could say at that point was, "Oh dear." Uh, See, so this is—I'd say the fundamental problem is humans. We come up with these brilliant, brilliant, brilliant software, but as long as you're running it through human hardware, it's gonna fuck up. Like, we are yeah. entropy with a face. We will just mess it up. Like So much for your argument that humans can basically be fixed. Uh, we still can. It's just, it's hard. Well, you're more optimistic than me, man. <laughs> it's possible. It's just, you have to be constantly working against yourself. That's that's the tricky part. Yeah, I mean, people, um, people have knee-jerk responses to things. You need to be aware of your own. Like, people, like... That's the problem with uh, you know, internet activism. It's created all these knee-jerk responses people have now. Yeah. Like, men's right activist, you must be a neckbeard who will never get laid. That's that's knee-jerk. And it's well, just, yeah, it just even... taints any possible message any either side could have had, really. Get oh, God, children. we're discussing social justice again. Fix the kids. This is why I'm going to be a teacher. A strong, strong, independent sense of self. And but you should define, you know, define... <clears throat> You shouldn't let things define you, you should define your things. And so, a, you know, you just, shouldn't be gay, you should be your gay. You shouldn't be straight, you should be your straight. And, and that just will to take, take different shapes and different forms depending on who you are. And, and just that, to take this argument to another level, um... Oh, fucking Jews. Maybe you, you could put gays in games not because you are gay and want to be, and only want to be reminded of yourself, but because you're straight, but want to play as a gay person because it's role-playing. Yes, he does. Uh, yeah, exactly. That's what I did with Dragon Age 2. I role-played as a gay man. Role-play the gay. Give it a shot today. Um, I mean, why not? I mean, I mean, who cares about just always having to getting to play a character exactly like you? Nothing's... That's not going to help anything. That's just going to keep everyone in a bubble, isn't it? Well, I do, but I'm a maniac. Everyone should... Everyone should try at least once in their life, to go into a chat room and pretend to be someone completely unlike who they are. Pretend to be a pregnant black female teenager. How many people have you gotten to gift you expensive items in WoW by pretending to be a lady, Yahtzee? Oh, we don't talk about my side <laughs> business. Yahtzee. Surprised how many more people haven't figured it out. <laughs> you do talk about your penis an awful lot. That's... I it's just I get a lot of people who are just holding <clears throat> on to those last scraps of hope that maybe I am a lady after all. I don't know. I mean, I, I've, I've always thought that thing, like, people will laugh at, you know, kind of loser shut-ins, but at the same time, you know, desperate people, you shouldn't take advantage of them, you know, it's... When people are sad, they're weak, and taking advantage of the weak, you know, there's no skill in that. Yeah, and you shouldn't try to goad people on uh, social justice and stuff. I mean, that's, you know, I, I think in, in regards to this, it's, it, it was effort to make it out. Like that's 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 the weird part to me. It's yeah. like you it, had to go took, to effort. It, it took effort to remove. Yeah, when you could just, you could just, it's like how really. Well, the early, interesting the interesting like, thing is that uh, when they were called out on it, Nintendo uh, replied saying they didn't want to make a social commentary. They just wanted to see to have a fun thing where none of this ickiness gets in the way of fun for all the family. I could understand a degree of that fear maybe a little while ago, but I mean, come on, like, even, like, Sears is telling homophobes to fuck off now, like... Is that a great example, though? 
<laughs> well, I would say Sears would be uh, would focus on a very liberal minded sort of outset mindset. Yeah, but you you know the, the fucking crazy homophobe yeah, there's, like there's the flag. How the do- crazy homophobes are a loud group in the states, and they used to they used to swing like fucking heavy like. If the crazy homophobes got in a big letter writing campaign, people would fucking panic. And now, because, you know, sane people can easily communicate with them and just go, hey, thanks for, like, making me feel included. The crazy homophobes feel like, you know, they, they, they just have less power. So they yelled at Sears about it, and then Sears were like, oh, yeah, more gays! And it was kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, that's one approach. Okay, I think I'm seeing the route to the flag now. I don't know. People should be more egotistical. People should be more themselves. Like, don't... Don't diminish yourself by making yourself a title or a thing. Like, it's, you know, make... You should be your version of that, and that should be... That should take primacy. You should be you. You're waffling again. Uh, that's important. Be, be an egomaniac. It's good for you. Uh, quote Gabriel Morton, 2014. <laughs> well, well, you're certainly putting work into that. Fucking hey. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Hey, man. It's, it's, trust me, it's, 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 it's how you deal with depression. Can you jump on the tree? I doubt it. I Give it a try. I think I can jump down onto that. That's a long way. Yeah, but it's... Oh. Uh... <laughs> okay, I think I see what I did wrong. Fucking loser. I think I see what I did wrong there. Uh... So the, uh, the, the related bit of news is that The Sims 4... Oops. Sims 4 is being given an adults-only certificate in Russia because you can have same-sex mm. relationships in it. Fucking Russia. <laughs> they always bring up the kids when the Russians do it. I mean, the reason why they're certifying it is just because they're afraid it, Im- it will impede the development of the good Russian children. <laughs> I love the idea, like, I, I, and it's it's one of those things that's, like, weirdly popular among homophobes, too, that you can be, like, talked into being gay. Yeah. You know? Like, I love the people who are so rabidly homophobic, like, oh, I'd never be gay, except, you know, if I heard a convincing argument. It's yes, like, that's not how it works. Like you're not going to talk me into penis. Like it's just it, it doesn't it doesn't appeal to me. I mean, maybe if it was a particularly lovely penis. <laughs> uh, I don't know. People can be just, hysterical about that. I mean, it's kind of weird when you think about like sexuality just in general is fucking retarded. I wish I could switch it off at times. Like if if there was <laughs> that option and I could like maybe sort of just reproduce in a different way. Like I don't know. We we you cuddle would, in some sort of nuclear sun, and then out comes a space baby. You, I think you would become a completely emotionless robot without the sexual drive. I would probably turn myself into a solar powered satellite and just drift off into space like Voyager and I just mean, scan things. That's what I'd do. So much personality is linked to the glands. Yeah, well, I mean that's that's another you know there's another big discussion is what are we without I mean, the fucking structures that build us, you know. Would it's- I be so lovable if I wasn't such a horn dog? Is the question. <laughs> I remember there was a time when you were like almost about to quit. <laughs> you were like, "I'm done with this. I'm done chasing women. I'm done trying to like feel you know, the, the f- soft touch of a female flesh." You know, the funny thing is, I tend to take that attitude immediately after breaking up with a woman. Because <laughs> at that point, my sex bank is topped off. Yeah, I'm full up on sex, and I don't know why I bothered in the first place. Yeah. Just can't stand the heartache. Just gonna swear off it now. See, I don't know. I don't get the heartache factor, but uh, it's just yeah, look, yeah. Because you're already Mister Sexless, aren't you? No. So, huh? well, well, no emotion, <laughs> sex. That's your problem. Well, no, it's just it's just different emotion. Like I, you know, I, I don't. I see you, flag. You will flag. Be, you will be mine. <laughs> Have trouble betting the ladies, you say. You, you, don't, you don't use that voice? You should use that voice. You will be mine. Come to Yahtzee. Come to butter. <laughs> uh, wouldn't it be nice though, like, if you could just, just be like, I'm done with this today? Like, it's going to be interesting because, you know, well, technology you is getting better. What, what would happen, you know, to your sense of self if you could just totally just not be. You just, ah, I'm going to be a different gender. I'm tired yeah. of this shit. Well, I guess that's the question. And when we say changing gender, is that also changing all your like sexual drive, all your your sexual yeah. uh, attractions? Yeah, there's a lot of hardwired shit in there, you know. One. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot uh, of our personalities is again linked to the kind of things we find attractive. Mm. I mean, my curse is that I'm attracted to independence in a woman, but the trouble is, independent women tend not like to him. want relationships so much because they're so independent. <laughs> Damn you, independence. Damn you, personally being attracted to independence. <laughs> uh, uh, yes. 
So, yes, have all the sex you want with whoever you want. I think that's our message today. Unless they're kids. Yeah. And, and have sex with them. They're not... Make good. sure the person you're having sex with wants to have sex with you too. They're not it's, wired up properly. Yeah, that's... it's Butterflies don't fuck caterpillars. I don't know, sometimes good. I wonder if sexuality should be on a case-by-case basis. Some people mature a lot faster, you know. It's all genetics. Yeah, I'm hoping to end puberty sometime next year. Well, nothing under 15, I'd say. <laughs> There you go, folks. The Yahtzee Croshaw 15-year-old stamp of approval. Well, there are some 15-year-olds who aren't physically mature enough, and that would be wrong. But there are some 15-year-olds that are, like, as physically mature as a 17 or 18-year-old who can at least pass uh, for it. Yeah, and, like, and it's and I don't think it's right to, you know, penalize the people who have sex with them thinking they're 18. No, if you no, if you meet someone at a bar and you fuck that person, that's not your fault. I know fucking, like, I've, I've been talking to female friends, like, oh, yeah, I've been, you know, going there since I was 15 with a fake idea i'm like what oh dear like you were fucking 15 like 50 fucking 15 yeah you can hardly be blamed for statutory rape in that case can you well no if you sneak into a bar with a fake id and you were in a bar that's like that's not you know yes. that's, that's nobody's fault you like, can even say to the officer i yeah. checked her id <laughs> yeah, that's part of my pre-sex <laughs> ritual as well <laughs> as the please ID. don't tell the police i raped you waiver uh, just i mean that, that that blew my mind i was like 50, fucking 15 like I was just, well, what are you? What the hell are you doing? When I was fifteen, I was smoking weed and meowing the opening riff to Gorilla Radio I was, in a mirror. I was probably <laughs> playing, there, there. It is. I was probably playing Half Life, thinking about it, or the demo. Mm, meow, for meow, 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 meow. I spent like half an hour doing that once because I was just baked out of my shit. Ah, uh, the pot. Hey, you. Gimme. Ha ha ha, I took <laughs> your horse. What are you going to do about that? <laughs> Assassin's Creed. Grand Theft Equine. It's your Auditore, friend of the people. Can you run someone over with the horse? I kind of want to see what that looks like. Get him! Go oh, on. that was crap. <laughs> You're supposed well, to get tangled up under the legs, goddammit. Well, like, what? getting hit by a horse in the old days was, like, the one of the worst things you could happen, have well, happened What do you dude. want, man? I'm a friend to the people. Ugh. I want ragdoll physics and horse legs. A flag appeared on the map. Go, go, gadget. Horse. Yes, the go, go, horse. gadget, horse. Uh. That was disappointing. <laughs> uh. All right, what movie did you watch this week? Well, threw myself a bit of a curveball this week and Ooh. essentially watched a film at random. Oh. Basically, I watched it because I was listening to a podcast and someone mentioned it. I just thought, fuck it. Boom. I'm going to rent that. Do it. And the film was Death to Smoochie. The 2002 film starring Edward Norton and Robin Williams and directed by, of all people, Danny DeVito. Interesting. What did you think? Well, get ready for some damning with fine praise. It had some good ideas and it had one or two good lines. Isn't that thing you wrote your ranty argument, <laughs> you know, yelling about, about, it had some good ideas. Well, the plot of the film is that it's sort of a black comedy that explores the seedy underbelly of children's entertainers, which is a fun idea. The plot... I, yeah, uh, like, the, the Wiggles must have got up to some fucked up shit, man. You know, I heard a story that the, the Wiggles sort of patented that uh, sort of po double point gesture they do with their hands that they do with kids, and they did that because they're not allowed to actually touch children, and children kept coming up wanting to hug them. That's but, sad. But they're all just middle-aged men in colourful jumpers. Yeah, but it's... You can hug other human beings, like most, you know... Not... I'm in trouble with those trees, mate. I mean, if you can't hug a fucking wiggle... I, I got a remedy. Having trouble with trees, if you want it. <laughs> no. Dang. Get him. Go on, get him. What the... <laughs> that was almost Wily e. Coyote physics <laughs> right there. <laughs> the arrow took, like, a 90 degree left. I thought he was sitting in midair for a second <laughs> after the horse ran away. It's uh, yeah. So the film Death to Smoochie is such a that's an odd thing for you to wind up saying. That's story is Robin Williams is a children's entertainer who's caught uh, grafting parents to for like charging them to uh, put their put kids in this show, and uh, he turns out to be a misanthropic like sweary man because you know children's entertainer mis misanthropic sweary lol juxtaposition. So in an effort to you know, uh, salvage their reputation. The TV network hires an utterly squeaky clean entertainer played by Edward Norton 
who is in completely genuine and completely on the level and no one quite believes that he is. <laughs> The most terrifying thing in the world are truly genuine people. Like, you'll, every now and then, like, you know how you'll get, like, people who go to church and shit, but you can tell they don't really believe, they believe in the structure, and then you get the people who, like, completely 100% can hear Jesus? Yeah, that, that's, yeah. that's weird. Yeah, that's, it's, oh, it's, it's just amazing, and it's, it's always terrifying when you see, like, the real... And it's fun to look at the look on the face of the not-quite-believer believer yeah. as that person talks. Going, oh, God. Sort of <laughs> smile and nod, smile and nod. Is this how insane I sound? But I guess uh, the problem with the film I found is that it couldn't really decide on Tone. what it was doing. It couldn't uh. really decide on whether it was depicting Edward Norton's character as a sap or or a hero. Uh, you know, it's been a long time since I've seen Death to Smoochie and I only watched of, it once. Well, apparently it got really bad reviews. Yeah, dude, why. it was Because the tone's all over the place. And it's got, it's got cute ideas. They're sort of like playing up this uh, whole plot point where... Uh, Edward Norton's character was the way he was because he got over anger management issues and there were hints that that was going to boil over but it sort of Bins. and it sort of did in the most weak source possible way and then uh. the film just goes oh actually you're fine and then he gets the girl and everything's great and, and they were sort of uncertain about what to do with Robin Williams' character as well he sort of flipped back and forth between good and bad and like uh, completely irredeemable and sympathetic and it, yeah it was basically a film that was all over the place yeah. Yeah. Good lines, good idea, but couldn't really save it. Well, let's focus. What story are you telling? Yes, exactly. You gotta, you gotta... I mean, uh... Are you hiring prostitutes? You can hire prostitutes in this game, yes. What for? Well, not to have sex with you, because oh, I know not. that's what you were thinking, you give dirty it, To give man. you a back rub. I'll show you. Part I'd of... kill for a legitimate massage right now, actually. Well, part of the main mechanics in Assassin's Creed, as you're probably aware, is uh, hiding in plain sight. Oh, yes. right, so you can like, smuggle yourself somewhere with boobs. Yeah, one of the ways you can do that is to hide among crowds that happen to be walking in the right direction. And you can hire courtesans, basically, to act as a mobile crowd. And they'll stand <laughs> around you and you can walk so... past guards and they can't see you because you're surrounded by tits. <laughs> Look, a flock of tits approaches. <laughs> There's nothing in the center of that. That's not weird. I used pearl necklace. It's super <laughs> effective. Super effective. <laughs> trying to... <laughs> figure out how to get onto this aqueduct because there's a flag on it um i don't know follow it to its to its terminus uh, well i did that but there wasn't a way up i know there's a way up somewhere well, on these like aqueducts. that big that big castle in the distance under the moon no no no, left left like under the moon yeah see that not, turret yeah i'm like, not sure that's... i can climb that though uh... uh there's a little there's a little house near it that's a step in the right direction maybe i could climb that tower see, it's interesting then... you watch death to smoochie because i've been wanting you to watch um Cable Guy, which is another movie that got fairly harshly panned when it came out, but I actually really goddamn enjoy it because I think mm. it, like it's sort of similar to Death to Smoochie in I think a lot of in, what in I, some weird ways, but I think it, it it holds its tone a little more effectively. Well, what I did like about uh, Death to Smoochie was Robin Williams' performance. Actually, Robin Williams. This is what I mean. I love when comedians play like against their public persona but more what i think is them genuinely like jim carrey and eternal sunshine of the spotless mind fucking yeah. i think um robin williams going for really really dramatic roles like in one hour photo yeah that wasn't so good but i like him when he was like sort of comedically pathetic and evil which was adam sandler and punch drunk love comedically pathetic yeah like it was he was fucking pathetic and just depressed and miserable and that just, it was, it was perfect. That was amazing. I was mm. just like, this is the most believable thing that Adam Sandler's ever done. This pathetic, broken person. Yes, I've heard it's a highlight of his otherwise incredibly mediocre film career. Yeah, yeah. It is, it's, it's, Eternal Sunshine, uh, not, um, Punch Drunk Love is a really good movie, and I, it's, if, if you're bored, I suggest you watch it. Okay. Um, along with, along with whatever the other one I suggested was. Uh, I forget. Cable Guy. Yes, That's right. I thought Cable you meant guy. a different one. I defend Cable. Like there are movies where people, you know, they're, they're they're sort of terrible, and sometimes they are bad, but they kind of like just hit a hit, hit a point with you, and you like them. I don't know. Cable Guy is definitely one of those for me. Okay. Well, did you watch a film this week? Um, I saw Spider-Man 2 in the theaters. Amazing Spider-Man 2. Got to get it Amazing right. Amazing Spider-Man 2. Well, just got to differentiate. Yeah. Well, you know, in, in theaters, they weren't just you know playing Spider-Man Two, the Tobey Maguire one in the theater. 
I've Although I did, I did, I think Spider Man, to- out of Tobey Maguire's trilogy, Spider Man 2 I liked best because. I think that's a was, common feeling. Yeah, it was way better action than one. I think the plot arc of both the characters was quite nice. I quite liked Dr. Octopus's. The way they p- portrayed him and the way it ended. I, I was, didn't quite like Sam Raimi's habit of uh, always trying to make the villains redeemable, often in kind of glurgy ways. Well, that was the thing. The first Green Goblin wasn't redeemable. He chose evil and he got killed. Do you, and do you think I could parachute onto that aqueduct? Fucking only one way to find out. Two right. Um, Renaissance doc- jump. D- you know, like that's that's the thing. Like Willem Dafoe is like Goblin. Nope, you're not going to do it. Uh, um, Renaissance he, fail. He let the fucking evil win. Whereas Octopus was like, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna die human. And so that you know, there was there was kind of a bit of a ride of that. I don't know. I liked it. I, I enjoyed it. It was. I thought their attempt to redeem Sandman was terrible. Really, well, really fucking yeah. glad. Morkish is the word. Spider Man Three is an abortion. It is an awful, terrible, bloated. Well, Ugly film. Well, having seen Amazing Spider-Man 2, how does that stack up? Well, okay, people go on about how there's, like, a glut of, um, villains, and there isn't. There is one antagonist for the Amazing Spider-Man movies, and that's Oscorp. Oh, this you... single antagonist then has multiple points of interaction, which are things like Electro and what the... Oh, okay. Oh, it's are a you... well. Can you drop... What's in the well? Nothing. Nothing. The well's just another hiding place. Oh, okay. So yeah, by by having a single hey, you can climb that. actual and anta- oh, so you can jump up there. I guess I gotta get onto this cliff. By having a single actual antagonist in the form of Oscorp, and like it is, I don't know, it's, don't it's, it's, so? it's, it's, it's it's kind of deliberately more comic-y, because Oscorp are just like let's jam animal DNA into shit and see what happens. And there's kind of a you know there's a reason for it, but it also opens up. So I was reading an excellent uh, deconstruction of the film by film critic Hulk. Do you know film critic Hulk? Um, I don't know. I think I read one thing of his about... He's a very insightful film critic who talks like the Incredible Hulk. <laughs> That's just I, his thing. It concerns me that that would get in the way of some actually interesting film critic stuff. Well, like, cause the Hulk, gets, I think the Hulk speech would get to me after a while. Well, whatever gets the message across. It's like yeah. Mr. Plinkett, you know? Yeah. He pretends to be a murderer. Yeah, but he doesn't but speak in all caps. Well, he has his own thing. Talks like Buffalo Bill. <laughs> I love Buffalo Bill's voice. I love that his name was James, not James. James. Jame, yes. so in- All right. So what did what, what did Hulk have to say about it? Well, he was saying he didn't like that whole centralizing the villains around Oscorp thing because he felt the essence of Spider-Man in the originals is that uh, his power being uh, just being assigned randomly to just everyday schlubs, really, and that it was the difference was. Uh, how you approached life now that you had these abilities. Well, that's the thing, though. This Spider-Man being the exemplar, the, and everyone else basically just being thugs who just want to rob banks all the time. The cause of the power has a single point, but especially, like, by the end of the film, they're just looking for schlubs to give power to. Why? Oh, just... Because just, just fucking... Because that's, that's kind of what I actually like about it being a little more comic-y, is because doing villain motivations in a movie is really hard. Because most of the time, take over the world isn't a viable thing to do in a film, really. I mean, I thought that was one of the bigger problems with the first Amazing Spider-Man, was... What's his name? Um, Lizard doesn't make a good uh-huh. main uh-huh. villain because he doesn't do motivation much. Like, Lizard was just a berserk threat, really. Isn't Aren't the best villains, though, the ones you could sort of see where they're coming from? Well, to a degree, yeah. I mean, the, like, again, they, huh. they have some decent motivations for, like, you know, there's reasons why these things are happening, but they're being sort of used to scaffold into a kind of more classic comic villain kind of thing, which I fucking like because I'm... You know, I like the variety. I don't need everything to be fucking gritty and realistic, and I, I don't mind a bit of daftness. And I think the, the the current little crop of Spider-Man movies, I think, is not grotesquely corny like emo Spider-Man, but still cutely comic book. I was uh, watching a defense of that scene by Bob Chipman the other day, and he makes the point that... It was what dumb Peter Parker would have thought was cool. Yes, you yeah, know, that was... I've, I've heard that I mean, a million times. Peter so. Parker's supposed to be a big nerd. That yeah. was just his idea of what cool people did. That's nobody's... No. Like, no. That. Sam Raimi just kind of hates his protagonists. If that's his thing. <laughs> I mean, if you see all the beatings Bruce Campbell took in the Evil Dead trilogy. 
Doc Man and um, the Frighteners are my favorite Sam Raimi movies. Yeah, Doc Man, he gets kicked up and down the garden path a few times, yeah, doesn't Doc he? Doc Man's great. And Frighteners, Frighteners is one of my absolute favorite movies. It's fantastic. Uh, what else? Did you watch Drag Me to Hell? Yes. That is a film with a serious hate on for its protagonist. Yeah, it's literally just torture. The whole, the whole movie is just torturing its protagonist. In... I, I wouldn't say it's one of his better movies. It has very Raimi-ish moments that I sort of like because I kind of like some of like Raimi's weird little uh, tropes. That I are think Drag to Me him. to Hell was a very conscious attempt to get back to the yeah, which horror comedy feel of the Evil Dead films. I think was a problem by the end, but like there are still moments that I really enjoyed, like when the corpse vomits all over and stuff. Like oh, I that's... just noticed I've only got one parachute left. Good thing I noticed that. That could have led to an embarrassing oh, moment. Oh, you run out of them? Oh, okay. So yeah. this isn't like Just Cause. They're a limited resource. You can only carry so many paper handkerchiefs. I don't know. See, like, I'd detach... Yes. Oscorp, the cause of, like, the abilities from the motivation of the villains themselves. So what it means is there's, like, because in Spider-Man 3, you know, they had to explain, like, well, Sandman, he's, like, from over here, and then there's Venom from over here, and then there's Hobgoblin from over here. So there were three whole different plot elements well, it's to good. explain all these different villains. It's good to build a broader universe though. And it's I think I know, it I think clutters you, I think that clutters a film. I, I think, think when, having I think a single you, cause allows you to have little satellite characters revolving around this thing that can have their own individual sort of motivations and attitudes. I don't think it's about where the powers come from. Another thing that film critical made the case that the problem is not inherently with multiple villains. No, well, that's what I mean. At, I don't, I don't, I mean, I don't think example, there's multiple villains exactly. He gave the example of the Dark Knight having two major villains, but that's because the whole they point of that from each other. the whole point of that film is that it's a struggle between Batman and the Joker for the fate of Harvey Dent. And so, you know, multiple villains can work together, but in cases like Spider-Man Three and Amazing Spider-Man Two, is that that's where you just get the sort of grab bag problem. Well, again, I, I, I wouldn't say Amazing Spider-Man Two has that problem. Wouldn't you? No. I haven't seen it myself, but I've heard a lot of very scathing reviews. Eh. And they're all saying that basically it's just a sequence of moments intended to sell individual ideas rather than a cohesive film. I think it's a problem we're living in of... Where, you know, we're entering into a period of serious movie serialization. Where it's getting more and more difficult, I think, to validly define a film just by itself. But surely uh, that's just making an excuse for a film not, in have a, not, in have, not having a conclusive ending. No, well, I think this does have a conclusive ending. It just, it spiral. It, it has a conclusive ending for the few little arcs that it's got, and then it builds to something new and else. And I, I, I don't think inherently that's a bad thing. Like, I think, because this is the thing, like, serialization, like, TV's changing, films are changing, we're entering this period where stuff is just getting a little bit different. What and if the I'd, studio says, we're not going to fund the next film, the last one flopped, and then eh. everyone's just given blue balls? Oh, dude, that, how many times has that actually happened? Quite Super, a few. Super Mario. How we many, just move on and we fucking cope. I mean, is that really... How like, many things have ended with a sequel hook and then not gotten a sequel? How many things? Have you got an answer to that? I'm a lot of curious. things. A lot of things have. We'll give you some more examples. I'm, I'm curious now. I want to hear more. Because right. well, I, mean, I, I think Super Mario is one of the most really fantastic examples of that. Like, it is... Did that have a sequel hook? Yes, yes. I haven't seen like, it in a while. Literally, like Peach comes in and goes, "We've got more shit to do." Oh wait, it was Daisy in that movie, right? See, that scene sounds more like a joke sequel hook to me. Well, you know, in the fullness of time, it was just a sort of you know campy, up tempo. I like the Mario continues, Brothers. I like the Mario vibe. Brothers movie. If it was released today, people would go, "Oh, look at this hilarious, gritty Mario Brothers remake." And I mean, if you ask me, a scene like that where someone comes in and like says, "We got shit to do," pump shotgun. That's dramatic, pretty much the scene. That is pretty much dramatic the scene. chord and zoom in. That scene doesn't work if you show the next bit where everyone's just going. All right then, uh, shall I drive? Do you want okay, to, no, it'll. Do you I want guarantee. To ride, you, do you want to ride my car, or shall we follow each other? If well, it happened, it would have just been cut to the next location and in the middle of Daisy explaining what is happening. But I don't know. See, I, 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 I loved the Mario Brothers movie for the interpretation of the source material, which I think was really creative and fun. You know, every time I hear the Mario Brothers movie brought up these days, it's from someone saying, "I actually quite liked it." Can yeah. we just assume it was a good film now? Well, I, I don't care if you think it's good or bad. I make the argument that it's good because generally people rag on it. And I think, like, fucking Dustin... Not Dustin Hoffman, fucking... Ed Harris? 
What? No. I always get Ed Harris confused with the, that, this guy. Dennis, Dennis Hopper. Hopper. Yeah. I always get Ed Harris Dennis, Dennis Hopper, Hopper confused. Dennis Hopper is like a corrupt, democratically elected Cooper is just... I don't know. To, to me, that's a brilliant idea. And watching it in execution is fucking hilarious. You know, Dennis Hopper was the first choice for uh, Ed Harris's character in The Truman Show. Huh. Well, I really... I miss so, Dennis Hopper. I love Dennis Hopper. It I guess great. I'm not the only one who gets those two confused. Mad as a hat full of See assholes. also Stephen Burkoff. Who's Stephen Burkoff? He's another one from uh. the same school. <laughs> the school where Anthony Hopkins is the headmaster. I want blue velvet. I can't. It's every time I think about Dennis Hopper, I get blue velvet in my head. Yes, yes. Gabe, you want to fuck. We've done <laughs> Gabe, that. Gabe, you want to fuck. Did we have any more topics? Uh, well, I think oh, we're still... yes. We had the Constantine thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. So they're actually making a Constantine series with a guy that looks like Constantine and was once in the UK. Being so... played by Matt Ryan, who, Ooh. according to his Wikipedia page, played Edward Kenway in Assassin's Creed 4. How relevant! <laughs> but yes, they are actually going ahead with a series for Constantine And not NBC. Constantine, played by a dark-haired American. Yeah, I mean, I know it's not pronounced Constantine, because I once read a comic where somebody, someone yeah. called him Constantine and he corrected them. Yeah, that's... that's... No, I, I have a... We actually, we, we have a mutual friend who was obsessed with Constantine. and Yes, he even uh, went, went as him one Halloween, right? Yeah. But, well, but well, went to massive, a con, actually. massive amounts of uh, detail put into the costume. Yeah. He got the specific coat, the specific cigarettes. Well, he's always smoked the specific cigarettes. Silk cuts. Yes, silk cuts. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the the joke is that he's always looked like him, but he dyes his hair black because he's vain. Yes. And well, yes. So it's I const- teased him, and then finally, we there, there, there's a picture floating out there. I'll, I'll, I might. Hey, there's a there's a chest. So they are making uh, uh, Constantine more in line with the comic book. Well, I thought- more so than the film Const- Keanu Reeves, <laughs> Constantine, where he was, you know, just an uh, occult detective who battled demons. When With special effects, when part of the appeal of Constantine is his uh, moral flexibility as a character, he doesn't specifically only fight demons. Sometimes he works with demons. Well, that he works. He just plays both sides. He's a con man. Yeah, that's he's a his... con man. That, that, I mean, that's why I think it really fits a series because you don't need a lot of special effects really for a well, no, lot I of kind Constantine. Of, I kind of preferred the arcs where he's uh, keeping away from the magic bollocks and just acting as Fucking a con with man. People, yeah. Well, I mean, that's the thing. Like, it's, I it's, mean, there's it's, a lot of, uh, if you read the Hellblazer comic books, there's a lot of runs, especially Brian Azzarello's run. Which was Azzarello's? He, Is that him he's in the prison? guy. Yeah, it started with him in prison. Yeah. And then there was a few other things in the American Heartland. But that was where Constantine was pretty much basically a villain. He That I found a little jarring because I've read all of them. And I've, you know, I was reading them just in a row and I got up to Azarello's and suddenly he's in prison and he's acting like just a real vicious jerk. I like him as a character you don't know if you can depend on because that was the origin of the character when he was introduced into Swamp Thing as a sort of this sort of all-knowing mysterious figure who'd show up and you wasn't sure what his end game was. Mm. I think it kind of lost something when you got too into his motivation and his family and everything. I kind of like that... Yeah, I, I still think that he can be seen as that, you know, as who he was in Swamp Thing. But it's nice to, like, be able to see that and also know that he does try. Parachutes. You know, he does... He means well. Yes, he gets his friends killed. Yes, he fucks up. I wouldn't say he does always mean well. I think he's just constantly out to prolong his own life. I think he and means to mean well. Sometimes people get in the way. <laughs> I think that's, that's, that's what I get from him. I think he means to mean well. He, he, he wants to do good, he's just not very good at it. Would you like a change of clothing colour, by the Ooh, way? Ooh, Roman olive. Wetlands ebony. I'll show wetlands you the... Ebony. Yeah, I'll get, show get you the one. wetlands. Boom. Black and red's a fantastic colour combination. But what colour should we... works. How should we colour our cape? <laughs> All this, and Nintendo can't put the gays in a game. Let's put, make it olive just to clash horribly. <laughs> oh, actually, I don't, at you. actually, I don't think I can change the colour of uh, my armour because I'm wearing uh, the special armour that you only get for completing side quests. A specific set of side quests. Well, my heart is broken. Hang on, can I change my outfits? Guess not. <laughs> Locked, locked, locked. No fun anymore. Basically. Where were we? Constantine. Yeah. So yes. I'm actually, you know, I, I think this could be this could be a good show. Are you saying it could be interesting? 
Well, given the given what we know of it already, I mean, is it on NBC? Yes, NBC. All right, that could be a bit of a problem. What else? I always does thought NBC? he should swear a lot. What else does NBC do? Hannibal. Right, I that's their big thing at the moment because everyone's s- trying to like get in on some of that like HBO True Detective. I haven't seen Hannibal. That's the one with Le Chief in it, isn't it? Uh, yeah, from Casino Royale. I've seen like the first two episodes. Apparently, season two gets really good. I don't know. Extreme Renaissance Sports. <laughs> Sounds like a Mythbusters episode. I'm, I'm bored. There's been no combat in this thing. I'm gonna just gonna fight these assholes. Yeah, like kill some bastards. Hey, bastards! Come eat my sword. Fuck the police. Yeah. And you. What's going? What the? <laughs> I don't think that guy got a bit overexcited there. Adventure. Are you hitting him? What's happening? Fuck! Look at this dynamic combat. Boom. I'll just wait for the attack. <laughs> wait for attack. Counter. What? Chain counter. Alright, look, that's some fucking bleak combat. <laughs> Actually, I think I'll shoot that guy. With my sawn off shotgun. Right in the chest. Guns were not massive in the Renaissance, gotta say. <laughs> Especially not guns the size of your hand. <laughs> I'd be worried about something like that exploding in my hand. You saw nothing. Go about your day. Whatever miserable little lives you have. Well, that was fun. <laughs> was it? Was it? That was fucking like that. You hit. You just donked that guy on the head. Nothing happened. Then you know they all stood there and waited. Is this? Is this on easy? No. I mean, at least the dudes just... in fucking like Arkham Asylum and shit would punch you if you just stood there yeah and again in revelations they just added more ways to kill people they they added bombs in (laughs) Assassin's Creed Revelations you could just throw a poison bomb on a group of four guys all dead hooray all dead after impromptu dance party all dead in Shimoda um uh, where do you suppose I mean where do you suppose the series is going well it's well we know for a fact it's going to Assassin's Creed Unity well no but I mean like sort of well, frankly, I don't think it's going anywhere. Because the whole future plot... That, yeah, that, like, okay, explain to me the future plot, because that's the bit that I'm kind of curious about. Okay, this is where it gets complex. Awesome. Basically, you were future Desmond, who was a man in the future, who was kidnapped by the Templars, and they were all rooting through your memories looking for the locations of the Apple of Eden, which was a magic device left by the pre-human civilization that was better than us in every way. With me so far? Yes. So then, sadly, Des- I am completely with you. <laughs> so then, Desmond was rescued by the assassins, and then uh-huh. the assassins put him like uh, well, the Templars put him through Alt- Altair's life. The assassins put him through Ezio's life, so that Desmond would uh, learn the skills of an assassin by living through Ezio. Uh-huh. So that Desmond would become an assassin, right. and through Ezio, they also learned the location of uh, of, a, of another piece of Eden, like a magic device. So they went and found it and picked up the device, and then they uh, realized that. There was going to be a solar flare that was going to kill everyone unless they found another device that uh, stopped the solar flare somehow. So, in Assassin's Creed 3, they found the device that stops the solar flare, but then it was revealed that using the device would also release an evil ghost of one of the uh, right, superpowered things from before the human race. All right, now who would then, lost me. That's... Who would then enact evil schemes of, of some description on the human race. And at that point, Desmond decided, fuck it, solar flare, and uh, goes along with it and is killed. In Assassin's Creed 4, you're not Desmond anymore, you're silent protagonist, who you never see because it's all from a first-person perspective. Hmm. And uh, apparently the Templars nicked Desmond's brain and used it to extract a whole bunch of other, you know, historical scenarios to play through. And, uh, yeah, at that point, this is what takes us up to Assassin's Creed 4, where basically the evil, all-powerful being is somewhere out there in the world doing machinations and shit, but she basically does fuck all throughout the whole course of that game. And it Basically, it's just, you know, a wheel spinner. And that's what the series is at this point. They're not going to make any massive strides in the future plot, because that might mean having to bring the series to an end, and it's too much of a money spinner at this point. It's just, oh, there's this secret conflict. It might boil over at some point. In the meantime, here's some cool historical settings. Enjoy. At this point, it might be better just to ditch the future plot, I was, to be honest. Yeah, that's, I think that's the bit that always got me, was why does it need this future framing device? Yeah. Like, what 
does that really add? Well, what does it validate? Like the idea that you have more lives or can continue? Like, well, because that's how it felt in the first one. It's like, oh, this isn't how it happened. Your brain's getting detached. Back we go. And well, yeah, I mean, that's 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 what it still does. I mean, you can't kill civilians because then it says Ezio didn't kill civilians. You're trying to like make, you're trying to recreate history here, not just fuck about. <laughs> and that's so that's that's the sort of framing device, you know. It's like uh, you don't die; you just become desynchronized because you're not succeeding like the actual historical figure did. See, it seems wildly unnecessary, and just the idea—it's like, oh, I will travel through time via your DNA. Just, just I don't know. Something about that just bugs the shit out of me. Well, at least there's been a bit more care and thought going into the story than a lot of properties. Uh... There is quite an extensive amount of story at this point. Yeah, but I mean, why not just have it as, you know, historical? It's an epic. I, I guess there's no reason why it couldn't be. Yeah, well, that's that's what I mean. Like, what is... The future story seems to be the clutter. It seems to be not adding, really, the, to the lot. The current iteration of the Templar Assassin feud in this point in history. That's pretty much all it is. Pigeon Coop. Yeah, that's where you... Uh, I'll show you, actually. That's where you sent your assassin trainees out on missions to level them up. Your orphans. Yeah, basically. <laughs> you are basically the Pied Piper. And you led them all off to the assassin's lair and made them into more of you. Uh, the cycle continues. Yeah, the... <laughs> Boy, it was a shame that game crashed, wasn't it, Gabriel? That's not how I remember it. There was a fight with ninjas. I saved you. It was amazing. Yeah. Nazi's computer crashed. So, yeah, the, the video ended abruptly, and we were all just like, huh. My computer didn't crash. The game crashed. And the game crashed. But we've done an hour anyway. So I'm going to blame we, you, play. So we're just going to put a farewell message on the end, and maybe like a picture of something cool. Like what? I don't know. I'll figure this out in edit. In, Just a I'll cannon figure it out. that shoots kittens. I'll figure it out in post. In post. We'll fix it in post. Yes. Have uh, a good week, everybody. Yeah, be the best you you can be. If your game crashes, don't take that shit. <laughs>